What is on your radar, Robbie? Well, here's some news that alarmed me, and it will probably alarm you as well. Remember EcoHealth Alliance? That's the scientific organization headed by Dr. Peter Daszak at the center of the public debate over alleged federal funding of -of gain-of-function research. Well, it turns out that EcoHealth Alliance is back at it again. The organization has applied for more funding to study bat coronavirus, coronaviruses in Southeast Asia. This research would involve, quote, community-based surveys and biological sampling of people frequently exposed to wildlife in Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam, as well as, quote, sampling and PCR screening of bats and other wildlife at community surveillance sites to identify viruses and hosts related to the human infections, end quote. The NIH, that's the National Institutes of Health, the U.S. government organization that funds and approves such research, well, they granted the proposal. Seriously. More on that in a minute, but first a refresher for you in case you've forgotten. While many in the scientific community, including coronavirus czar Anthony Fauci, believe a natural zoonotic spillover is the most likely origin story for COVID-19, Other experts think it's possible that COVID emerged from a laboratory, possibly as a result of scientific experimentation on infected bats. Those who think the lab leak is a plausible explanation for the pandemic tend to be concerned about EcoHealth Alliance's previous activities. EcoHealth Alliance was the only U.S.-based group conducting research on bat coronaviruses in China. The group worked closely with the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is situated in Wuhan, China, which just so happens to be where the pandemic got started. In the early days of the pandemic, when the lab leak theory began to gain steam, Dr. Dasik and other scientists signed an open letter in The Lancet condemning the, quote, conspiracy theory that COVID was anything other than a naturally occurring phenomenon. Dr. Dasik did not, however, disclose his obvious conflict of interest that EcoHealth Alliance was involved in the very research, in the very part of the world that lab leak theorists are worried about. Reports from The Intercept contend that in its efforts to head off and prepare for a pandemic, EcoHealth Alliance oversaw an experiment in which researchers intentionally made coronaviruses more pathogenic and transmissible. One grant report contained evidence that the research group also did an experiment with infectious clones of MERS, another deadly virus. Dasik also conceded on an interview, in an interview with The Intercept that EcoHealth Alliance may have submitted a research proposal that involved inserting a fern cleavage site into a bat coronavirus genetic sequence, the fern cleavage site being the key element of COVID-19's adaptability. Dasik said the experiment did not receive public funding and thus did not proceed, though it's unknown if scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology or elsewhere made progress on this front before applying for the public funds. In April of 2020, the NIH ordered, by the way, EcoHealth Alliance to stop spending the grant money it had previously received. It was reported that this was done at the behest of the Trump administration. A few months later, the funding resumed. Now flash forward to the present. EcoHealth Alliance's latest project has a start date of September 21st, 2022. That's last week. And is expecting to run for five years. Now the amount of the grant is only $653,392. In terms of public funding, that's a drop in the bucket. So to be clear, the headline here is not that the NIH is like bankrupting taxpayers or something. The headline is that such research continues to be performed at all. Peter Daszak, by the way, did not respond to a request for comment, but in defense of this kind of research in general, he says that, look, it's important to understand where these diseases come from if we're going to prevent them and treat them. Other scientists completely disagree and think the risk of creating pandemics greatly outweighs whatever knowledge is accrued through conducting research in close proximity to bats. And Andy, Andy Weaver, a former sec- assistant secretary of defense for nuclear, chemical, and biological defense programs in the Obama administration, told Vox that, quote, because of our government support for this risky gain of function research, we've created the perfect cover for countries that want to do biological weapons research. The number one thing he recommended in that interview with Vox was, quote, ending government funding for risky research that plausibly could have caused this and future pandemics, end quote. 
Fox also notes that, quote, another potentially risky area of virology research involves identifying animal species that act as reservoirs of viruses that have the potential to cross over into humans and cause a pandemic. Scientists involved in this work go out to remote areas to take samples of those pathogens with dangerous potential, bring them back to the lab, and determine whether they might be able to infect human cells. Well, this is precisely what researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology apparently did in the years leading up to COVID-19 as they searched for the animal source of the original SARS virus, end quote. So not everyone in the U.S. government is perfectly content to let federally funded scientists uh, continue to poke and prod infected bat parts in foreign laboratories. Last week, Senator Joni Ernst, a Republican from Iowa, introduced a bill to prohibit EcoHealth Alliance from receiving any federal funding Quote, giving taxpayer money to EcoHealth to study pandemic prevention is like paying a suspected arsonist to conduct fire safety inspections, she said. NIH got it right when it canceled the funding for the experiments EcoHealth Alliance was conducting with China's state-run Wuhan Institute. In addition to violating multiple federal laws, EcoHealth has still not turned over documents about these dangerous studies that NIH has requested on multiple occasions that could offer vital clues to the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic." End quote. Justin Goodman, a senior vice president of advocacy and public policy at the White, Coast, White Coat Waste Project, told the Daily Caller that EcoHealth Alliance's animal experiments should not be defunded, should be defunded, not refunded, end quote. So uh, I saw this uh, going viral on social media kind of over the weekend, people saying, <laughs> did EcoHealth Alliance really get another grant to study back coronaviruses? My God. And uh, yeah, it appears that they have. And it, it, as I said, it's a small amount of money. It's not really, you know, the money is not, is not the que is not the issue here. The issue is that like why is this group? Which to be clear, we do not know for sure. The public has questions. I think they are very they are well justified questions. I think the explanations that Peter Dasik and others have given for what they were doing and why it was not dangerous and why it has nothing to do with with COVID. I, I think those answers are not satisfying whatsoever. And uh, there's been great you know, reporting, in, including in The Intercept, from, uh, from people affiliated with our former colleague, Ryan Grimm, that really gets to the heart of the matter. And I you know, encourage anyone who's skeptical to, to look at those stories. We don't know for sure. I accept that. There's no, no, there should be due process. There should be, you know, investigations. I'm not saying, you know, lock anybody up for this. Uh, right now, we need to know more. But certainly, we, we should question whether this kind of research still needs to be done. Like, and, and there is not, there is, there may be a consensus over these actual, these actual researchers think it's important to do this because this is how they keep getting grant money. But other scientific experts, other people in the scientific community are, I wonder whether this is worth it, given that you know, going into these caves, collecting these samples, then having them in a laboratory, fine, maybe there is some benefit from understanding them, but it, there's also tremendous risk from doing the process I just described. And some people wonder whether we're just, we're making the pandemics more likely, forget about understanding them, but we're making them more likely to occur because we do this kind of research. What do you think, Bacha? I, I, I'm so glad that you're highlighting this because I, I think I, to me, this is like file under they learned nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they cannot admit a single mistake, including gain of function research. I mean, I don't understand why we're not treating gain of function research like nuclear weapons. I, we should have a nonproliferation agreement. You yes. know, I, I think it's totally true that this could be so easily weaponized. And why are we just pursuing? I mean, I'm a Luddite more generally. I think that thing, you know, I, I'm totally comfortable saying, you know, no, we should not pursue this. No, we should not pursue that. It's too harmful, whatever it is. But, you know, we, we actually know where this potentially leads, right? I mean, there's a very uh, legitimate argument to be made that um, this leads directly to millions and millions and millions of people dying. And I just think their their reluctance to admit any mistakes is kind of what's leading here, right? Because they can't even admit, Dr. Fauci couldn't admit to you when you asked him about this, that this had been a mistake. And so, you know, we're just going to keep seeing this because, you know, the, the elites are so stuck in their version of things. And it was the other side that got this right. And so there's just no um, impetus and no incentive to say, actually, maybe this was a mistake. 
Right. They, they'll say that, no, 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 that's not really gain of function research technically. Right. Technically, gain of function <laughs> research is something else. An answer that satisfies absolutely no one because, well, who cares? Then the thing we're talking about that you're saying, well, that's not right. really gain of function research. Well, let's also be concerned about that. Right. That also sounds concerning. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward exactly. to your radar, Bacha. That'll be up next. Stay tuned, everybody.